Asian Development Bank supports Da Nang in developing new landfill and waste treatment facility. Plan on developing Da Nang Bay into seaport urban area. Tightening management of tour guides illegally operating in Da Nang. Dear RT News is happy to have you watching today. On September the 12th afternoon, Vice Chairman of the Da Nang People's Committee, Nguyễn Ngọc Tung, had a working section with a delegation from the Asian Development Bank, ADB, led by Mr. Eric Sigwick, ADB Country Director in Vietnam, to discuss the feasibility of the project to develop a new landfill and waste treatment facility. According to Mr. Eric Sigwick, in October, an ADB delegation will pay an on-site inspection visit to determine the volume, characteristics of the garbage source, and the location where the city authorities has planned to build the landfill as well as learning about the aspirations of the people living in the surrounding area. On that basic, the feasibility study will be finalized and reported to the Municipal People's Committee in late 2017. ADB also said that 15 partners had pledged to provide technology for this project. Vice Chairman of the Da Nang People's Committee, Nguyễn Ngọc Tung, said that the construction of a new landfill and waste treatment facility is an urgent task of the city with the aim of managing waste in a more sustainable and more environmental friendly way. The city pledged to create the most favorable conditions for ADB to early complete the feasibility study so that the project could be completed within 32 months as committed. On the occasion of the 55th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between Vietnam and Laos and the 50th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between Vietnam and Cambodia, on September the 12th afternoon in Da Nang, a fine arts exhibition entitled Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia was organized by the city's Department of Culture and Sports. Attending the exhibition were Mr. Kham San Phomasan, Consul General of the Lao People Democratic Republic in Da Nang, Mr. Chim Slothi, Director of the Department of Plastic Arts and Crafts under the Cambodian Ministry of Culture and Arts, and Mr. Dang Vik Yum, Head of the Da Nang Party Committee's Commission for Communication and Education. The exhibition witnesses the participation of 22 painters from the Kingdom of Cambodia, the Lao People's Democratic Republic and Da Nang City. The exhibition features 55 artworks with various types of materials, expressing a variety of emotions and colors with diverse artistic styles. The works show many different aspects of life and cultural characteristics of each country, as well as the friendly relations of Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia. The exhibition aims to strengthen the solidarity between the three nations. This is also an opportunity for painters to exchange their cultures, learn from each other's experience, and understand each other fight arts. The exhibition will last until September the 26th at the Da Nang Fight Arts Museum at 78 Le Yung Street. Within the APAC 2017 Small and Medium Enterprises Ministerial Meeting held in Ho Chi Minh City, on September the 12th, the APAC 2017 Startup Forum kicked off. The APAC 2017 Startup Forum serves as an opportunity for delegates and experts from the APAC member economies to find out solutions for supporting and developing micro, small and medium enterprises, especially the startup ones. Particularly, the discussions at the meeting focused on the policies that create conditions for enterprises to innovate and create opportunities for regional and international integration and getting access to the global value chain right from the startup period. Period. The delegates will also discuss the formation of the APAC startup ecosystem. The APAC 2017 Startup Forum also serves as an opportunity for APAC member economies to share experience, initiatives, and tools for supporting startups and forming a dynamic and networked APAC startups community. According to the Central Power Corporation, EVNCPC. In order to prepare for the APEC Economic Leaders Week 2017 in Da Nang, this unit has organized inspection sections and assigned its staff to regularly check the electricity grids, which will supply power for the important venues serving the APEC 2017 event. 
Accordingly, the power supply for priority locations must be ensured. The corporation has also assigned tasks to individuals and groups to ensure the power supply for APAC, at the same time making plans to ensure stable power supply, coordinating with the Central Region Low Dispatch Center and the Power Transmission Company 2 to accomplish the work of preparing for power supply for APAC, as well as working with the event organizers to clearly define the responsibility of each side in ensuring power supply. In addition, the unit has tested, inspected and carried out maintenance of all the related grids, checked the corridor route power system, ensured the communications as well as prepare for backup equipment for troubleshooting as required. The Municipal People's Committee has just announced the conclusion of the city leaders at a regular meeting on reviewing the investment policy and architectural plan for some projects and constructions in the city. More to follow. Specifically, the city leaders agreed with the proposal of the City Department of Construction on organizing a contest to look for ideas for developing Da Nang Bay into a seaport open area. The research area is about 7,199 hectares, 2,311 hectares of which is land area, and 4,888 hectares is water surface area, belonging to the administrative boundaries of Haizhou, Thanke, Lingchu, and Sengja districts. The city leaders assigned the Municipal Department of Construction and Department of Planning and Investment to implement the above-mentioned guideline, inviting the National Institute of Architecture to organize the contest. According to the Da Nang Department of Taxation, as of August 31, 2017, the total budget revenue of Da Nang was at more than 13,300 billion dollars, reaching 73.8% of the estimates assigned by the central government and equivalent to nearly 130% compared to the same period of 2016. Notably, the city's budget collection from real estate transactions in the first eight months exceeded the whole year's target by 2%. Some districts experienced the high revenue from real estate transfer, such as Sengjia, Wuhan Seng, Lingqiu, and Huavang districts. In addition, the prosperous real estate market in the first months of the year, along with the sharp increase in the number of transfer transactions and the city's auction organization for many landlords, have led to the dramatic rise in revenue revenue source from the transfer tax and personal income tax. According to the Danak Preventive Medicine Center, last week, Danak continued recording 143 cases of dengue fever, bringing the number of dengue cases from the beginning of 2017 to more than 4,700, up by nearly 95% compared to the same period last year. Particularly, the localities have seen the largest number of dengue cases at Thanke with 914 cases, Lingqi with 809 cases, and Haichou with 757 cases. Hundreds of small outbreaks have been promptly handled by local authorities, and the healthcare sector has also sprayed mosquito killing agents and set up the working teams to kill mosquito larvae to prevent and control outbreaks. According to the statistics made by the city's Department of Tourism, in the first eight months of 2017, the inspectorate of the department inspected and imposed fines totaling $763.7 million on 93 violation cases made by travel operators and tour guides, a year-on-year -year increase of 60.5%. Among them, there were 11 foreigners, including one Taiwanese, two Chinese, and eight Korean, who operate illegal tourism activities in Da Nang. 49 tour guides were imposed fine of $145.2 million, which is double the same period of 2016. According to the Municipal Department of Tourism, Da Nang has currently more than 400 tour guides in Chinese language, including Da Nang people and those from other localities. The department also sent documents to all the local travel agencies to announce the ban on letting foreigners to participate in interpreting and guiding tourists. And that's it for today's news. Remember to check out drt.dana.vn for more news and updates. Thank you for watching and see you next time.